But uh, we are here to hear your thoughts on uh, night two of WrestleMania. Oh, that was great. Okay, now we can move on. No, I'm just... <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, I, I, had a, I had a great time. Let I, me tell I you really, this. I've been show. to was... multiple WrestleManias. I've yeah. Multiple. I went to pretty much every WrestleMania for over a decade. I've yeah. watched every single one. I've gone back with people I, I, for the show I, I, and rewatched I, I, a lot of them. I have watched every single WrestleMania. Yeah. From from you know, I've watched every match of every WrestleMania, and I will say that the climax of this WrestleMania was the greatest climax that they've ever had to a WrestleMania ever. Yes. Uh, um, you know, I mean, it was just uh, it was really uh, really well done. Last two matches, um, just just tremendous. I mean, here's one thing I say. I thought this WrestleMania, as far as when I watched and everything. I would say it was perhaps the most predictable, and I'm not saying that in a bad way at all, because a lot of people complain about it, and I would say that like it was predictable, but in a sense, it's like, I think that, you know, you always want a few twists and turns, and that's fine, but I think that like largely, like, you know, like I expected, you know, in the, in the Cody match, right? When uh, when the Rock came out, I was expecting Austin to come out, okay, and it ended up being Undertaker. Sure, fine. That that I would, you know, so so a surprise, whatever. But I mean, I, I the, the the layered thing and all that, like, you know, I kind of figured all that. But the the point of all this is is that I think that um, you know, and, and, and you know, and AEW is very predictable too. I think that you know, and there's there's you know a few. I think that you want a few twists and turns, but if you can predict it, it's if it's probably for the best, and that's what's supposed to be is for the best, you know. I mean, that's that's the whole thing is to consistently sustain and grow this thing, and to grow this thing, you know, you want to produce what you know. In the end, people, you know, will make people the happiest, which is usually a predictable thing, um, and um, you know, create scenarios where you keep going, where you know, like nothing's the end. It's it's never the end. Everything is is on a journey to a never ending story. Yes. And and this one we closed a chapter after two years to a story, but in theory we have just closed a chapter because the book never ends. And um that's kind of like the thing that you know, when it, it's over, it's like, you know, like, yeah, now they gotta do raw tomorrow and but we saw we saw this great climax of a story and it's um it's very um interesting you know to me to watch just because of um you know i mean you know know the guy and um you know like you know my kids know the guy you know what i mean i mean not not well but it's like my son was named after the guy his his my son's best friend by some weird coincidence was named after dusty Rhodes. um it's 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 like a really um kind of um emotional bizarre thing you know i mean um because when my son was named after Cody Rhodes, he wasn't a pro wrestler. You know what I mean? He's a high school wrestler who was just happened to be Dusty's son, and he, you know, and it wasn't necessarily even really named after Cody Rhodes, but you know, he kind of was. You know, if you know, you know, I mean, it's like I was on the phone with Dusty Rhodes one day, and you know, we were coming up with names, and Dusty had been bragging about his son, and that was a cool name, you know and all that but it's 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 just you know weird you know because you you're telling me time. you didn't name your son after eric bischoff's hometown because <laughs> all these years i thought that's you you, you you know this you know I the story know. don't of course i do i was kidding yeah 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 no that didn't name it after that yeah um so kind of um you know a thing and then that story um so at the end of the th at, right at the end of the match you know when he was going to the back um I, I guess nick khan was the person who really did this but it was nick khan bruce pritchard and um and paul levesque had to watch and i knew that you know you probably everyone I, I, a lot of people know the story um but when cody had graduated high school you know i mean he had gotten um you know, he'd gotten an offer from Penn State, which, you know, if you follow college wrestling, you know, Penn State's a super powerhouse. But, I mean, there's a big difference between, um, you know, 
you know, I mean, he was the stud high school state champion in Georgia. But on a national basis, I mean, it's like there's a big difference between that and, and, and Penn State wrestling. And, um, and you know, he didn't, he didn't go to Penn State. And um, he wanted to become an actor. You know, he did, it was not necessarily pro wrestling. And Dusty made a lot of money, spent a lot of money. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, Cody grew up with, Cody grew up with Dusty. And one of the things was is that, like, you know, compared to the rest, compared to the athletes in other sports, the wrestlers do not make a lot of money. And Dusty was, I think, I don't know, I don't want to call the word bitter because that's probably not a fair word. But um, he certainly impressed it upon Cody that, you know, Dusty was one of the greatest drawing cards that wrestling ever had. One of the most charismatic guys wrestling ever had. And at the end, you know, Dusty Rhodes and whatever year we're talking about, 2005, I think we're talking about 2004, 2000, 2003 maybe, um, Dusty had been out of the game, um, didn't have a lot of money, and um, he pawned one of the, the gold watch, and, to, and he used that for the money to send Cody and his sister to study under Howard Fine, um, to study acting, and they didn't make it in acting. And um, but you know, Dusty would do that. You know, and and everyone's going to do that for the kids. And I always say everyone, but a lot of people would. And somehow, Nick Khan found the watch and presented it to Cody tonight. Wait, are they trying to claim it was the exact same watch? Yes, the same watch. No, I'm not talking like the same type of watch, but like the actual one that he pawned. They found the one that he pawned. That's the story. Hmm. Cody had it on and said that th they told him that. Um, I thought I they how... were telling him that they found the same. It's a it's a gold Rolex day date, and it's yes. a specific it's a specific watch. I thought they just found the same. But you're telling me that they found the actual exact that's... same watch that was on Dusty's wrist that he pawned. That's the story. how could they do that? You have to ask them. Okay, I, that's that's what he said. Hey, listen, and, one way or the other, I mean, whether it's the exact same watch or just the same watch, I mean, it's a great story. I just don't well, know how they could possibly have found the exact same watch. If it, well, I know. I was thinking the same thing. But if, um, look, if it's just the make of the watch, I don't think that's such a great story. That's still you a great always, story. Well, it's, it's, it's a symbolic it, thing. It's a that symbolic that thing. Yes. Sure, sure. It's nice, and it's a nice gift and all that and sure. all that. Sure. Right. Yeah, but they said it's the same watch. Well, if they if they actually found the exact same watch that he took off his wrist and gave to the pawn shop that went to some guy and that somehow what, knew, and how they I mean, that's it. a great story in the history of wrestling. That's a great story. And, yeah, this is something for Nick Khan because they asked Paul Levesque about it. I mean, I didn't see all the Paul Levesque press, press conference because I was doing a bunch of other stuff. But um, when they asked him about that story, he basically said, yeah, we did it, but, but that was... You know, because they asked him, like, how'd they find it? And he said, you really didn't know. He said, that was Nick. So, um, that Nick Khan, I don't know. He's uh, quite the uh, quite the guy right there. Because that was, uh, it was, I think it was his, I think it was Nick Khan's idea. And, I mean, they all kind of had the idea. And then they had to go, I guess, go find the thing. Yeah, they would have to go find the thing. How do you find it? That's my point. I know. No, Maybe I know. Maybe we'll find I... out tomorrow, but... Uh... No, I know, I know, no, no, no. Believe me, believe me. When I when I heard the story, it was just kind of like, how the hell do you know? You know what I mean? How the hell do you find that? I mean, uh, the... I mean, it's possible. Uh, here's the thing: if if he had it engraved, okay, mm -hmm. possible you can find because it was a specific, unique engraving. But if it still... was not engraved, like then it seems like impossible to me. But but still, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Well, the uh, match itself was, uh, I mean, it was amazing for what it was. I mean, it was sure. it was said to be bloodline rules, and what happened is, for the first 75%, well, it's, Cody it's a, and Roman I, just had a really good match. I think that they were about 20, 22 minutes or so yeah. in, and then they started layering, you know, one person, one person, one now, person. Now, I have to, I have to talk about this because this was actually ingenious, the way that they did this. We all knew it was going to happen, but the way they actually did it was was better than what I had envisioned. So the story here was... Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. I agree with that. The same, same thing with me. They, in the sense that I, I envisioned something, and what they did turned out better. So yeah. they're wrestling, and the key is that they had a million people running in, 
but none of them helped Cody win. What happened was Cody would be on the way to winning. He's got the guy set up for his finish, and a he heel even, would attack. And he even did it. Yep. But then he even would do it, and then and then yeah, and then one of the one but of the point the, is they one, would, of the, one of the family would a would heel attack. would prevent him from winning. A baby face would come in to take out the heel. Cody would be about to win again. A heel would show up, and then a baby face would show up to take him out. So, of course, first, you know, uh, Jimmy runs in. Jay shows up, puts him through a table on the ramp. Then Solo runs in. Solo, they, they literally repeated the finish from last year. Solo gives him the thumb. Roman spears him, and Cody kicks out. Then they did the combo spear and thumb, which yep. was a finish last year. And Cody kicked out of that. So then they hit John Cena's music. And, of course, this was interesting because Solo had killed John Cena at that Saudi show. Yep. It almost seemingly retired him. And so Cena makes his big return, and he gets his revenge. He beats the hell out of Solo Sokoa. But then they hit the Rock's music. And the Rock comes down to the ring, and we got to rock John Cena face-to-face 14 years, 12 years after their uh, their series at WrestleMania. Rock lays this guy out, and uh, and he's dead. And so who is going to take out the Rock? I thought it was Stone Cold Steve Austin, but... I, I did too, but, but it was Hit The Undertaker's music. The Undertaker shows up. We have an Undertaker-Rock stare down. The place goes totally nuts, and The Undertaker ends up giving him the choke slam, laying him out. So the lights go out. And the lights come out, come back on, and everybody has got... Actually, Seth Rollins also uh, made a run in, and this is actually very important. Seth Rollins uh, ran in first to take out The Rock, and they hit the Shield music. And he came out in a flak jacket, the old mm. Shield outfit, and he gets killed by The Rock, and then The Undertaker shows up. So when the Undertaker disappears, well, Roman, Roman, Roman hit him with back with the chair with, with, as revenge for when Seth Rollins. Well, hold on, I'm getting to that. Hit, hit, yeah. So, so this is that's before that. So the Undertaker shows up. He choke slams the Rock. The lights go out. So this is like the whole key to the match. The reason that Seth came out in the Shield gear is when the lights come back on. Roman is there and he's he's kind of recovering. Cody is dead and Seth is dead, and in the middle of the ring there's a chair. And so there's nobody else around. Roman grabs the chair, and all he has to do is kill Cody with his chair and beat him. And that's the end of Cody. But but he saw Seth in the flak jacket, and he had a flashback to 12 years ago when Seth in the flak jacket turned on him and destroyed the shield, and he cannot help himself. He ignores Cody and he beats the hell out of Seth Rollins. And this gives Cody time to begin recovering. Roman goes for the spear, but Cody's up. He kicks Roman Reigns. He hits the one crossroads. He hits the other crossroads. He hit the third crossroads. And he pins Roman Reigns. And the place went absolutely haywire for this. I mean, everybody's crying. Samantha Irvin can't even make the announcement. She's in tears trying to announce that Cody Rhodes has won. Uh, Michael Cole's trying to tell the story. He's in tears at the booth. You know, they've got Cody's family at ringside. His mother gets in the ring. All these baby faces come out. Negative One is in the ring. Yeah. His mother, Dustin, Ricky Starks, uh, I think QT Martin, they're all up in the in one of the uh, suites. They're all there at the building. Cody gets to give the belt to his mother, which he could never do because his father passed away. He could never give it to his father. And then uh, Cody cuts his promo and he goes, you know, there's two guys. I would not be here if it were not for these two guys. I would not have come back if it were not for them. And he goes, the first Bruce one Br- is Bruce Pritchard. And this and, crowd and, uh, did not want to boo Cody, but they did not cheer for Bruce Pritchard. But you know the other one is is even though he made it Paul Levesque, the other one was Vince McMahon. Well, he did not mention Vince McMahon. No, he did not. But he mentioned Paul. He said Paul was kicking and screaming and didn't want to come out. But he damn it, he wanted him to come out. And Paul did come out and like Paul's beat red. He's trying so hard not to cry. He hugs Cody, shakes hands. Cody goes and shakes hands with the announcers. He hugs Cole. He's thanking random camera guys. He's hugging production people. I mean, it was an amazing. Like the guys all come out, they put him up on the shoulders. Like uh, you know, that they did this amazing. for Brett, Lex Luger, 
a couple of other guys in Mania history. Kurt Angle, I think, had it once. Um, but yeah, this was... And the whole point of the show was, this is the beginning of a new era for this company. And, you know, one of the things is... The, the, era, the era really started a ways back, but this But was that's like... the key, Dave. How many times have they said, this is a new era for WWE? And they just tell you, and you're supposed to buy it, but yeah. it was like the same old Vince bullshit over and over again. You yeah. know, they did it. Remember with Corbin? It's like we're firing Corporal Corbin or whatever, Constable Corbin. It's going to be gonna, a new we're, era. We're, we're going to start listening to you, and then they didn't We're going to listen to the fans. Yeah. It was all lip service. This, they actually did like 18 months of a new era, and yeah. now we're calling it the new era. So yeah. at least as a fan, you're like, yeah, I see it. it it's yeah. been different. So that's what this show is, was all about, and it, it was is, an amazing finale. It is way different. You know, the other thing, too, is when I'm watching the show, there were so many things, like little things and matches that, like, and people don't even know because you know all the secret rules, right? There were so many things and matches that violated the secret rules, and it was just like, um, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I mean, God, all those memos. And it's like, it's all gone. I mean, like, you you know, every everything from, you know, constant professional wrestling you know what i mean it's like oh, yeah it's like it's like you know it's it's not a dirty word um spots in the ring that that vince thought were you know for whatever reason you know because vince was vince right he was the czar of everything and it had to be a certain way and they're just you know they're not even big things it's not like it's even game changing but i'm like watching you know like the the back and forth stuff and the place is going nuts for this stuff that used to be banned you know and like stylistically, you know, stylistically, it's it's getting it was more and more like the style that everybody else is doing. I mean, that one of the things one of the disadvantages of WWE was stylistically, even though some people think this is the only way to draw money style. It's like stylistically, they were behind, you know, as the world went forward, they were behind. And now, like they weren't they're not behind anymore. Because they're they're, they're obviously the t the talent has talent, you know. I mean, it's like it's it's a great group of talent, and now you know they're allowed to a, you know pretty much to I don't say full reign, but you know a lot more. I mean, there's still like the uh, the street fight was still very predictable and not really the greatest, but you know everyone does those street fights now. Um, Hey, they had a video before the Cody match where they talked about how Cody left and started a revolution. Oh, yeah, you would, you would, with uh, Kenny, o the young Kenny Omega Bucks. and the Young Bucks. They're right young there Bucks. on Chris, the Chris, screen on a WrestleMania Chris Jer show. Chris Jericho, yeah. Yeah, they're there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today, and don't miss out.